has been nearly a year and a half since a Port Orange man and beloved school teacher disappeared, simply vanished along with his car. Two years after the disappearance of Robert Heike, it appears that this mystery may have finally been solved. The computer teacher at Creekside Middle School out of Port Orange never showed up for work on the morning of October 25th, 2020. This afternoon, Heike's 2012 Chevy Impala was spotted by volunteers with Sunshine State Sonar and Recon Dive Recovery. They spotted the car submerged in a body of water in the area of Pioneer Trail. Those volunteers reached out to Port Orange Police who called the Volusia County Sheriff's Office. When someone goes missing, where were they traveling to? Where were they traveling from? We map out all the water in between during those routes. And, uh, you know, we search those bodies of water, and that's what we've been doing here for the last uh, six months. The medical examiner confirms the body found inside of a car in a canal is the missing Port Orange teacher. Robert Haga's car was found there over the weekend. He had been missing since October of 2020. About a year ago, I helped search for missing school teacher Robert Heike from Port Orange, Florida. And I went down there with a bunch of other guys. We searched a bunch of areas, but we were unsuccessful in finding him. But over this past month, he was recovered by Sunshine State Sonar and Recon Dive Recovery. A couple of great guys that are doing the same thing we're doing on their dime, on their time, going out searching ponds, trying to help these families get answers to where their loved ones are. And I just wanted to give some props to those guys and just shout them out to y'all. They're not like YouTubers like us as much, but they do have some channels if you want to subscribe and help support them. Also, I think uh, Nug made a GoFundMe if you guys want to donate some money to help them get better equipment and keep doing this because there's so many missing people in Florida. And these guys are doing an amazing job, you know, spending time away from their, their families, away from their jobs, trying to locate the missing and so I just wanted to give a shout out to them they're the ones that found Robert you know it's it was such a crazy scenario that it's in, it was in a spot that nobody would have looked and they're putting in the time the effort checking all these obscure random little spots and they're getting amazing results they also found another individual uh, shortly after finding Robert Heike so they're doing a great job and once again if you guys want to support them their links to social media will be in the description below and the rest of this video is going to be showing our search from a year ago this is a video I never put out you may have seen it on Nug's channel we ended up finding one vehicle in the water in Daytona and uh, pulling that out and also searching a bunch of ponds so if you guys just want to see the process of what happened back then where we searched keep on watching I really appreciate the support everybody watching our content we're out there every week we're gonna continue searching searching, helping families, removing cars from the water, and I can't thank you guys enough for all your support. Hey guys, today we're out in Port Orange, Florida, searching for a missing person, Robert Heike. He's a 70-year-old man. He went missing, you said over a year ago, Jeremy? Yeah, I think a year and three months. Uh, October 25th, 2020. And he was a local school teacher here, and basically he, he disappeared and there's kind of a lot of questions because there's no real reason for him to be missing. So we're out searching this the Halifax River today. So we're looking for his vehicle, the 2012 white Chevy Impala. And we're checking all the obvious bodies of water first. And today we're starting off in the Halifax River. So Jeremy's over there, he's going right. Me and Britton are going left. So we're just gonna cover and clear this area. You know, if anything, we find out where he's not. So we have a sonar today and we're gonna be running. And if there's any vehicles in the water, we should be able to see those pretty clearly hook a magnet to it and then identify if it's a vehicle i wonder how deep it gets out here who knows i mean there's oh, a you can sunken sailboat right oh, there yeah so. there's a sunken sailboat out there i don't know it might not be that deep there might be channels because I, I i don't even know definitely a lot of water to search so i think i mean since we have two boats it's going to be good to split up and go one way and you go the other way yeah. just go up the coastline pretty much that's what i'm thinking see what we can find the water looks calm though so, so that's good Right here. You got a car? Yeah. Are you serious? Dead serious. He's got a just, car. just right, right downstream from that boat ramp, sitting in that channel. I mean, you can still see me if you turn around. 
Yeah, a thousand percent. There's a car right here. All right, we'll Nine back. feet deep. So Jeremy just located a vehicle right here. And as you can see, it's pretty, you can see the, the shape is pretty accurate and the, the shadow looks just like a vehicle. Look and you my best guess is right that there. it could be his car. You I mean, it see, looks like the right type of car. You can see the windshield, dude. Like on so the Britain's going to try to get the magnet on it and then Jeremy's going to grab a buoy and then we're going to call Doug and uh, regroup from there. I mean, it might be, there's a chance it could be a different vehicle, but this was the first place, the logical place, you know, we go to first and it's a car. So you can see on live scope where Jeremy is showing, like, a, I guess it's like a 3D almost or live it's version just, of just, what's going yeah, on yeah, just real time. Version. But 35 feet out, we're now floating away from Yeah, it. now we're getting away from it. I'll go back and get a buoy if you want to. If you want to get the magnet. Yeah, we got. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I see it. We we're going over it. We're uh, going over it right uh, now. Right. You got it. I think I'm on it. He's on it. I think so. I mean, I'm on He's something. On. Oh, you just went right over it. Yeah, that's ex that's it right there. That's a hundred percent it. Yeah. So it's one little channel, ten feet deep. And if you're out there shooting sonar this way, you'll never see the car. Like, I literally was like just cruising right on the side, following this channel, and it popped off. We're not saying, you know, that this is this could be anything out there, it could be any type yeah. of vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, it adds up. Oh, yeah, it really, it does. It does. Yeah. So, you found it. Mm. Are you gonna dive on it? Do you want to dive? Yeah, I mean, we'll, we get two divers in the water. I think you and me can go officially, you know, if they if they want to. I mean, we'll talk about that later, but I would say, yeah, you and me go dive it and then we can clear it. It's gonna be super easy, it's 10 feet deep. Okay. Uh, Magnus on it, and there's that, that sand car. It's, okay. it's going to be yeah, on I mean, its the, wheels. The sonar image that you sent me, I mean, from finding hundreds of vehicles underwater and, and diving on them and, and pulling them out, I, I'm confidently saying that that vehicle hasn't been in there for longer than two No, years. it's yeah. shining. Yeah. It's casting you, the shadow. You coming back to this being like some of the other cases that we've solved, like it, it doesn't make sense for a vehicle to be there. Right. Like, how did that vehicle get there? We literally did, and did it come off of one of these properties? My guess is boat ramp, and it floated, floated. downstream because that's the currents going this way. All the windows could be up, and that could keep us buoyancy for a while. So for environmental purposes and the possible contents of the vehicle, something or someone being in it, we're gonna try to get it out. Um, if they don't, we do have it marked. They let their dive team, you know, sort of a scenario where we were in Lake Christine over in Lake where we found two vehicles and we're just gonna continue with our searching. So we'll see what the detective does, uh, what they decide to do, and we'll go from there. So the dive team and the tow guys here, and I guess they're trying to talk and figure out if they can bring a rotator. Um, Say gigantic tow truck. A giant tow truck. So I think it could, they can make it work. The ground might be soft. I don't know. Yesterday, I guess we saw that the, the sidewalk broke in that, oh, in that neighborhood because that thing was so big, but it did the job. It was just kind of overkill, I feel like, a little bit. stolen October last year. Oh really? Two blocks down. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Two yeah, stolen. I thought it was done. We could speculate probably. Stolen two blocks down. <laughs> they, were, 
probably late on payments and drove it in, but <laughs> it's all right. Close the case out. Right. I was telling him too, the news media reached out to us too, and they're like, hey, let's really? put the body inside. Oh, okay. Box. They listen to the scanners? Yeah. Good. Yeah. We Law enforcement asked us to get the boat and assist them with dragging the cable out to where the buoy is to help them out. So we're getting me and uh, Nug are in the boat right now. I'll drive you. Hold on. It should be interesting. Where you want it, Doug? Where you want it? Uh, come in here. We'll put the clasp on the front over there. And you slowly drag it out as, as we all feed it to you. Right. It's still going to be hard to take out, but yeah. it'll be a lot easier and safer than having to try to... It's impossible with buoyancy and all that stuff. Pull the line and I'll feed it, make sure it's loose. Oh, they can pull, yeah. We are going to pull it. Got done with us? Huh? Maybe stay close until they get it hooked. Did y'all reinforce the magnet while I was down there or is it still stuck how it was? Cause it's gonna, we just need a little bit longer. Can you untie this and untie that? pull your buoy? Uh, here, hold on. Yeah. Jeremy, can you grab it? Take the buoy off. Not even off, just lengthen it. Or put you another knot, All right? Well, I'd like to get on there so it feeds its way down. Yeah, that's what I said, right? We, I just have it looped around the buoy. Now we are helping the divers pull the chain out and they're they're standing on the car right now actually which is pretty crazy we're about to pull it up with that big rotator over there this is gonna be fun huh all right so they hooked the cable on look how long that thing is ford something hey you might get your magnet back oh there it is towards the top. goes. Wow. Look 
covered in barnacles. Down there a minute, huh? So that is going to wrap up today, day one. You can see we got this vehicle that Jeremy located. They pulled it up over out of the river over the railing. It was a pretty impressive movement. You can see the crane. I mean, this was a big operation. So many amazing people, part of this. So I really appreciate everybody that had a hand, the law enforcement, the towing company, all the you know volunteers and people and divers that came out to do it. So this is the end of day one. We're gonna be coming out tomorrow to do more searching and hopefully we can find some more vehicles. So the car is clear, nothing in the car. Crime scene investigators cleared the cab and the trunk. And then they cleared out <laughs> once yeah, it was done. They cleared out. Yeah. Well, their resources had to be justified. Oh, yeah, at, definitely. At this point, this is just a stolen vehicle. Um, Arrow Towing is going to take possession of it, and they'll deal with the insurance company and all that stuff, which is which is typical. You guys have seen me over the years. I take all the cars out. I'm going to take them back to the tow yard. It's just the, that's just the process. You'll have to hold on to I don't know, what the law is here, 15, 30 days, depending on it. And uh, you know, they'll get a hold of the insurance company. The insurance company will come pick the car up or have them dispose of it. But the biggest win here today is for the environment. The marine environment is a lot healthier because this car came out. And we're one step closer to finding Bob. That's that's the big thing in this. Yes, this held us up today. However, you know, this car possibly could have provided answers. The community here, the resources did whatever they could to get it out right away. They were very serious about it about it and in doing so the car is not in the river anymore we now know nobody's in it and huge huge win for the marine department it's mm -hmm. the biggest thing in this then tomorrow morning we'll be right back at it searching for a while all right so we're getting our boats together jeremy's almost done what are your thoughts so far today man it's kind of cold right now it's supposed to rain too i can deal with the cold if it starts raining on us i'm gonna be really miserable hopefully if we hurry up we can get this done before it starts raining but yeah. we'll see what happens so we're farther down with the Halifax River, and Jeremy's, once again, we're gonna split up with Britain, and Jeremy's gonna take his boat down this way. We're gonna go down this way and just check along the roads, any possible areas where a car could have gone in. Uh, we found one yesterday, just right off, farther down from the boat ramp, farther up over here. But today, uh, we're looking farther down the river and one of the main boat landings to try to just cover more areas as possible. All right guys, we just got out on the boat. We actually have two sonars running today. And I have mine right here. So it's only four feet currently, pretty shallow. It's pretty choppy. There's definitely a storm coming in. So we're trying to cover this before it starts pouring rain. And right now we're going through a channel. It's pretty deep right here. You can see this giant bridge we're about to head under. I don't know if there is a, there's always a chance there could be a car, but we're gonna clear it out. I don't know if there will be back here. There's a couple boat ramps, but we're gonna keep on looking. 11 feet. Uh, 
I don't know if we'll see any, but you can see from the sign, we are in a manatee area. So, there's a lot of wildlife out here. A lot of pelicans too. Well, popped another boat. This time it was Britain's boat. Making it hard for you guys down the river today. Yeah, I was. I saw it coming too. The boat was pushing in. Somewhere right here. I don't think it's on the bottom. You may not be able to fix that. That's a bad spot. That's a patch. Well, I don't know. That'd be hard to patch right so close to that. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's, well, that's not a patch, is it? No, that's just to hold yeah, that. Yeah, to hold the strap. I mean, you have a... All right, man. This needs about a day to dry, but um, it's the same uh, material as the lift bag, so this should hold up really well. Uh, I actually did double coating of glue, and even though it's raining, I was able to keep it pretty dry, so it should be pretty successful. You can already feel... Um, it's coming tacky. It's it's getting it's doing what it needs to do. Heck yeah, dude! I appreciate it. No problem. Man. <laughs> so it is currently raining right now. We just got the boats put up. Jeremy got back. We cleared this whole area. So I think we're about to go meet up with Doug and Josh and Carson. I'm trying to figure out the game plan right now, but we know this area is clear, at least as far as we the areas we searched in the part of it. It's a huge river, so there is more to search. It's just we searched all the most logical places and didn't find anything. So I think we're about to move to the next location. Choppy waters. And it was shallow. choppy. Uh, yeah, we searched a lot and then we were coming back and I was going to drop Britain off of the truck and then it was like two seawalls like covered in the sharp particles, barnacles or oysters or whatever. And you know, those things are razor sharp. Yeah. It was also really choppy and windy. So I was trying to back out and as I was turning out, like the wind just hit me and I, I was going, I saw it coming, I couldn't do anything and it stabbed Luckily, the side. Luckily grabbed all the sonar. It, yeah, we had, I had so. two sonars in there, I had mine in there too, so I was like, I didn't like panic, but I was like, okay, I gotta just get back. But I fell, ended up falling out in the water, I was soaking wet, I had to change. Oh. But none of the gear got messed up, so that's okay. the silver lining. Yeah. I think it's repairable. It is repairable. We've ripped our boat open plenty of times, so we, have, we had the material to fix it. Sweet. We have the glue to repair. Could have been a That's lot worse. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really so what we're doing here is this is his neighborhood. This is the main thoroughfare. So we have this body of water, that body of water, and when you come in up front, the there's big one. one to either side. Yeah. Do you so, think this could be deep enough? Oh yeah, they're all ten feet deep. Yeah. Uh, so y'all searched all these? We've, we've no, we haven't searched them all. Oh. But we searched the one behind his house and another one. So all of these were dug out to build the foundations for all of these homes. So they're consistently all going to be nine to ten feet we'll take 44 from here up to i4 where his cell phone last ping base basing that on him coming home his route home there's a couple of bodies of water on that route we need to rule gotcha. out okay um, if we don't find him throughout this and those bodies of water from i4 and 44 where his cell phone last ping to here then we're gonna tonight after school is over with, because the school he taught at is right here. Yeah. There's four bodies of water on the school grounds. So we cannot search that. We cannot go in there while there's school or staff there. Yeah. We don't want to uh, cause any alarm or any type of, you know, yeah. mental tr or emotional trauma yeah. of us just being there. Of course. Because you know, just kids seeing us, they're going to think the worst. And we just don't want to do that to the children there. Yeah, of course. So when, when the, if we haven't found him mm -hmm. by this evening, We'll end up uh, at the school searching those ponds. Yep. Watch out, don't get up there. Yep. Yep. You're, you're gonna be in the way or stay. The developer dug all of these out the same depth to build the foundations of all these homes. So mm. they, they, they're all consistent. Now I wonder if the four across the street at the school are gonna be the same depth. Mm -hmm. There's one up there around that corner, not too far from here, had a memorial on it. Yep. Yep. I saw that. Yeah. Is it deep enough? Yeah, I'm not out here though. 
I don't think you need to worry about checking on the far sides. I'm gonna walk over to the other side. Come back. Huh? Come back. So pond one of like six is clear, right? Yeah. We're gonna check this, number two. And well, luckily they're working their way up to us. Yeah, so, so maybe procrastinate long enough, they'll do it all. <laughs> we haven't had the police called yet, so it's a rainy day. Most people are just chilling inside, so that's kinda helps us a little bit. Most people are like I mean, I don't see what any, are uh, doing? <laughs> but you know, I will say I don't see any no trespassing signs. No. So I don't think it's illegal as long as there's no, just electric motors. All right, Jeremy just got back. Pond number two is clear. Yeah, this one was a little more wavy, but most of it was deep enough. All right, guys, I am in the third pond of this stretch of road looking for robert's vehicle this is kind of a big pond but it's there's huge hills over to the right so it'd be hard for him to clear that but we're gonna look anyways just to rule out every logical area it's pretty shallow but i'm gonna say well it's six feet it's deep enough to have a car there's also a road over here that goes by so there's potential All right, we're at pond number four, and it looks pretty clear, so we're about to move on to the next one. Okay, you way already down here? Yeah, we hit all the ones. There was like, there was like one small one on the right we didn't go to. Okay. Just because it seemed unlikely. Well, the right unlikely. is kind of yeah, 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 but we, we hit all the ones, uh, pretty much every one. This is the last one on the list. All clear, but they're all deep enough. Oh, yeah, yeah. We got a bunch of people calling, probably. Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> we already ran into the... Uh, HOA president. Really? And uh, she knows we're here. She was pretty heavy at first, but uh, she understands. All right, so Nug just cleared this. It did get down to 13 feet, but nothing out there. I'm going to pull you up. Okay. Oh, you stop. <laughs> Number five or six clear now we're going to another spot so this is another pond about 15 minutes away we're checking right now it, it, it doesn't this is on purpose it would have to be on purpose yeah. if, if this was it. it looks like what if this was an accident there's no way Probably not. You can't accidentally drive straight on this path going down this freeway. Yeah. I mean, unless you like turned and then hit and flew over or something, but he'd be going fast. So we're at another pond here. Um, and this is kind of one that we don't suspect that he's in. If he is in here, it's gotta be intentional. Just the way the roads are, it's gonna be very unlikely that he's in here. We're just checking it really quick. Jeremy's in a pull in, got his boat out right now. And he's just gonna clear it just for peace of mind. So we know that we've cleared every, body of water that we can think of. And after this we're oh Final deep hole? Yeah. A little deeper. A little deeper than you thought. A little deeper. Push through. Okay. Oh okay. Alright, good luck there. All right guys, so right now we're at the last location of the day. If you can see behind me, this is actually the school that Robert taught at. Now there's actually several ponds around the school. We had to wait till after you know, school went out and the children are gone. We're just coming out here. It's the last location of the day. It's pretty dark, but we didn't want to cause you know a stir. We don't think that he's in any of these ponds, but since they're so close to school, we have to check them out just to make sure that they're clear. So that's what we're doing right now. So I wonder how deep it is out here. Is he out there? I mean, if it's like the other ones that we just came from, they're 10 feet, they're pretty deep. I'm thinking this one's shallow, but you know, who knows, man? 
The other ones right by here are 10 feet. So anything's possible. It looks really clear in the water, actually. Oh, does it? Dang. Steamy. Oh, it's so shallow, man. What? Oh, damn it, it's clear. Yeah, look at that. It is very clear. Alright. How did this work? And there they go. Man, look at that. Cuts right into the water. So you guys saw we did a lot over those couple days while we were down there searching for Robert. But once again, you know, we were unsuccessful. We did not find him. A year later, Sunshine State Sonar Recon Dive Recovery came in, found Robert, which is amazing because the family just did not have any answers and this can help them get that closure now. So once again, if you guys want to help support them, their links will be in the description below and go check them out. They're amazing guys and we appreciate all your support watching our videos. We'll see you on the next one.